Well, um, that's the background noise. It is a lot of noise. Uh, I'm just curious, how with this time off you've had, how does this compare to like last year when you, you missed a month and you came back pretty strong? Or do you feel like you're you're trending that way that it's possible for you to kind of hit the ground running when you when you are activated? I mean, when I came back last year, it wasn't like I went, I, I, it took maybe a month or so, maybe longer, maybe a little less before I, I caught real fire. But, uh, you know, it's a six month season, you know, I, whether I perform well uh, the day I come back or um, as the season moves along, you know, I, I, I have a responsibility to play well every single day. So I, that's, that's what my focus has been on. That's, that's, uh, what my target is. So, um, you know, during these, this time off, this, this rehab time, how's the background noise? Is it killing you guys and people folks? Eh? Uh, yeah, no, I just, um, I'm, I'm, I'm working on, on the rest of the season. I'm working on uh, the fundamentals. <clears throat> Joey, is there any sense of urgency that Toronto's on the schedule next, your hometown? No. No. No, it, the timing just worked out. And uh, if I wasn't ready, if, if I ended up um, taking this time off um, five, six days later, I would have missed the series. So I, I just want to come back and perform well. I mean, I've performed so poorly to start the season. It's not something I'm comfortable with or used to. And, um, you know, I, coming back from being on the couch or in bed for eight, nine days, you know, I need to make sure that I'm in a good way physically or else I risk injury or I risk poor performance. So I have to come back and perform well. And um, whether Toronto was, you know, backed up against that, that eight, nine days or, or now or even further down the line, it wouldn't have made a difference. I actually messaged my mother who, um, you know, there's going to be pe plenty of people at the game, uh, games, um, you know, if, if, um, if I can't go, I can't go. And, you know, it happens. During your time off before the rehab started, how much time do you spend thinking about baseball? Do you completely get away from it or, or do you say kind of, you know, d d does it stay in your mind at all? Yeah. I mean, it, you go from playing every day to, um, to, you know, I was ill, um, to, you know, posting up, posting up in a hotel room or at your house. Um, but yeah, no, I, it sits with me. I mean, I, I don't, I never want to play poorly. Um, and I'm a problem solver by nature when it comes to, it comes to my job. So I spent most, most of my time trying to come up with some simple ideas for, for return, uh, the adjustments I would like to make and, you know, that's basically it. You know, and then, and then now I'm, I'm, in, you know, I'm, I'm executing them uh, in my practice work and in game. So it's really nice to be back working. If anyone else from Cincinnati have any questions for Joe about his rehab? Joe, I have a, a slightly different type of question. The, the players you're playing around there at high A, they, they're, having a lot of success as a team. Have you been impressed with the players there? Yeah. And the game, I mean, the game yesterday, there was, there was quite a few impressive performances, but uh, yeah, yeah. There's some, some, certainly some, some potential here. It's so early in their careers that, you know, I can't make any sort of claim, but there's certainly some, some talent here for sure. All right, we'll invite our folks from Toronto. Go ahead. Gregor. We good? Oh, no. Oh, no. Hold on one sec. Go ahead, guys from Toronto. Go ahead, John. Hey, Joe. Thanks for taking the time uh, to chat with us today. Uh, when you come back to Toronto, are there any particular sites or parts of the city that you look forward to uh, seeing or reconnecting with? Sites wise, like the center of the baseball and parts of the city, like somewhere around windows, maybe the second deck, we'll see somewhere, somewhere, somewhere around there. That's what I'm targeting. 
It's what I'm most looking forward to. Fair enough. Hey, Joey, it's Shai from Sportsnet. Hope you're well. Can you hear okay? Yes, thank you. There's a lot of, we got some music in the stadium here. I, just uh, as I know the, your focus is obviously on your season now, what you've got to do to kind of get yourself back. But I'm just wondering, casting forward to next spring, have you thought much about the World Baseball Classic? Is that something that you'd like to do once more in your career? I haven't thought about it. I, I was asked the question and uh, from a, a Canadian teammate, and uh, I really didn't have the answer at the time just because I hadn't thought about it. I mean, with um, with the changes to baseball over the last two plus years, uh, I, I'm trying really hard not to get ahead of myself. There's just been so many changes, and I don't I don't even know if there will be a tournament, so I I, I don't even want to speak on it. Okay. Uh, given the way your process has evolved over the course of your career, and the way that maybe you've adapted to how you prepare for a season, is the timing of that tournament maybe a bit more problematic for you now than maybe earlier in your career? No, it's probably better, to be honest with you. Playing more intense games earlier in the year is probably a better thing for me, if I'm honest. What, uh, what, what can you get from that, the, the competitive at-bats that early in the season um, that, that maybe you don't get in the typical spring training? What can that help you with? Yeah, there, there, there's, you know, we're, we're going to be on an on a international stage. You know, nobody wants to embarrass themselves. Everybody wants to represent themselves, their family, and their country as well. Um, so you want to you want to perform, and 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 that taps into something that you know it's really hard to replicate in spring training. It's difficult to replicate even now in these rehab games. You know, I'm 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 trying to trick myself on a daily basis. Um, you know, when you're cornered or pushed up, pushed, you know, you've got your back pushed against the wall. Um, you can. I feel like there's something else that that comes out of a player and and uh, it's worked for me in the past. So, you know, I, again, I don't want to embarrass myself wearing, you know, you know, performing in front of large crowds or performing internationally. So and that would definitely help me help speed up my my preparation for the season, I think. Thanks. Dan Shulman. Hey, Joey, how you doing? Yeah. Hey, how are you? Uh, I'm good. Uh, if you don't mind reminiscing a little bit, I, I should know this, but when you were a kid growing up playing baseball, how much did you come watch Blue Jay games? Who were your favorite players? Were you, that sort of thing back when you were a kid. Right. Um, so we watched, you know, it's, I have very, very clear memories of, of watching the Blue Jays. First of all, you know, the, the Apple Auto Glass jingle is still in, my, in the head, in my head to this day, you know, um, Apple Auto Glass, you know. Um, Black and Decker, of course. Um, you know, I watched uh, Jays baseball every single day. Um, it was a part of my daily routine. Um, when I got a little bit older, I, I was more busy playing ball and practicing and training. Um, so it was difficult to someone can you mute. Am I muting? Sorry. Um, you know, I, during that time in my life, I, I missed some of, you know, I missed some of um, uh, some of some of the Jays. But, you know, when I was anywhere from, you know, the fondest, best stretch of Jays baseball, I was I, it was my prime, my my Jays watching prime. And so um, yeah, daily, daily, you know, I, I, I know the roster uh, like the back of my hand. I, there's so many great players that came through. It was like Toronto was like, you know, it, Toronto was like, the, uh, you know, the late '90s, early 2000 Yankees before you know they they did their thing with all all the superstars. I mean, it was fabulous. We were so lucky, and um, you know, the um, the 1994 series interrupted a likely all Canadian uh, World Series. I feel scorned. Um, but, um, no, I, it was, it was a great stretch of time. And, uh, and then when I wanted to start playing baseball, it, you know, I, I, I turned it off and focused on my own thing. And, um, but yeah, no, I still keep track of the Jays. How can I not? It's, you know, my mom, my family, my friends, you know, they pepper me with stuff like that and you can't help it. You know, it's, it's, I live, I grew up 11 kilometers, which is about seven miles ish 
from the, the stadium. You know, I used to bike downtown all the time. My father worked r- like, like right down Spadina uh, across on one of the islands. Um, you know, so I was always down there working. I was very much a part of downtown Toronto and, you know, it's, it's, it ha- I have great memories, great, great memories of, of the city and, and, and certainly the Jays. So, yeah. Great. Thanks, Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead, Mike. Thanks. Um, nice to see you, Joe. Thanks for doing this. Um, I, and I admire your optimism for the 1994 Blue Jays. Um, but I was just wondering, you were talking earlier about, you know, if you can go Friday, if you feel well enough, um, what's going to have to happen tonight uh, in order for you to, to know whether you're good to go? No, I'll, I'll likely, uh, I'll likely be there Friday. Um, I'd say that I can't think of anything, you know, I can't think of anything that, I mean, anything can happen, but I, nothing comes to mind that, that will keep me from, from being there on Friday. I feel well. I've been competing well. I played defense for seven innings yesterday. So, you know, um, yeah, I'm ready to play. 